I welcome all of you that are joining this morning. God is so good. Amen. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, we are so grateful. In the name of Jesus, we come before your throne room. Lord, we know that you are the one that has the word of life. And we have come to that, receive that word of life from you, the God of the universe. Our life needs rejuvenation, transformation, restoration, deliverance. And it comes through your word. As we hear your word today, Father, use it for your glory. Use your word to bring divine transformation. Use your word to strengthen us, to enable us and empower us. Use your word, almighty God, to renew our mind and renew our spirit. Teach us what we need, Father, to be victorious, to be overcomers. Holy Spirit, help us today. Holy Spirit, teach us. We thank you for every person joining. Give us an encounter that is unique, that is divine, that is supernatural, and that is powerful. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. My topic today, I'm excited about it. It's knowing the God who knows who you are. The God who knows who you are. So no matter what part of the journey of life that you are in, there is a God that knows you. There is a God that is aware of your situation and your circumstances. There is a God that is walking with you. The awareness of God's awareness, it keeps you bold and it keeps you humble at the same time. The awareness of God's awareness, it gives you a boldness, a confidence, and yet it keeps you humble. Why? Because you know this God that is great. You know this God that is mighty. You know this God that is awesome. That was the encounter that Jacob had on his way to his uncle Laban. This is in Genesis 28 verse 15. God spoke and that's what God is saying to each and every one of us today that belong to him. This is what the Lord said. He says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God is saying today to each and every one of us, I'm going to be with you where you're going and I'm not going to leave you until I bring you back, until I complete my promise, until I complete my purpose and agenda for your life. I'm not going to leave you alone. I will always be with you. God is interested in everything that concerns us. He's interested. He's passionately interested and he's ever present. I love what David said in Psalm 139 from verse 1 to 6. I'm reading from the NLT version. He says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say before I say it, Lord. He says, before he opens his mouth, he says, God, you know what I'm going to say. He says, you are going before me and you follow me. In other words, you are all around me. You are ahead of me. You are behind me. God is all around you. No matter what you're dealing with, God is all around you. And when he said that, he said, you place your hand of blessing upon my head. I pray for you today. May the hand of God's blessing ah, rest upon your head. May the hand of God's blessing rest upon your destiny in the name of Jesus. Because when God places his hands upon you, you're safe. You're blessed. You're defended. You're protected. Nothing can come against you when God's hand rests upon you. And today I decree and declare the God who has power in his righteous right hand, let that hand rest upon you. He says, verse 6, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. It's too big. God is too big. If we can understand God, then he's not big enough to solve our problems. If we can know God's ways, then he's not big enough to bring solution that we need. He's big. He's huge. He's mysterious. Yet, he's personable. He knows you 
personally. That's what the psalmist was saying. That God's power is so great, but yet he knows me. He knows everything about me. He knows everything I do. He knows what I'm dealing with. He knows what I'm facing. He's all around me, no matter how many enemies I'm facing. You see, the quality of God's greatness determines the quality of our lives when we believe. David had a revelation that this God is so big and I believe. So what David knew about God controls David's faith. What David understood about God determined what David was able to achieve. So the more we have a revelation of who God is, the more we have a true perspective of who God is, the better our life will be. The more we'll be victorious. <laughs> because to the extent that you know God is to the extent that you are victorious. To the extent that you understand, that's why today's teaching I think is significant. To the extent that you know the ability of God and his interest in your life is to the extent that you are able to fulfill God's purpose for your life. I love what A.W. Toas said. He said, what a person thinks about God is the most important thing about that person. What you think about God is the most important thing about you. David described God as limitless in knowledge, limitless in power, limitless in ability. He described God as limitless in capacity. He described God as being all-knowing in revelation. He was limitless. And he allowed this incredible thought of, that he has about God to govern his life. When you allow this amazing picture of God to govern your life, you will be able to do incredible things. And I pray today, after you get this teaching today, that you will begin to truly understand how big God is. How awesome he is, how amazing he is, how incredible he is. So our knowledge of God and his love will cause us to be confident. It's a big confidence booster. And when your confidence is boost, there is no limit to what you can do. There is no limit to what you can achieve. There is no limit to what you can have. There is no limit to what God can make happen through you because you know who he is. David was great because he knew the greatness of God. Looking for the people, God himself is looking for the people who will believe he's great, who will believe his ability, who will believe he's a miracle worker. God is looking for the people that he can walk through. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, he said God's eyes is going to our throat throughout the whole world, looking for whom he may show himself strong on their behalf. God wants to do amazing things on earth, but he wants to do it to somebody that is believing in him. He wants to do it through somebody who knows his ability. He wants to do it through somebody who has confidence in him. I love Hebrews 11.6. He said, those who come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must believe that he is a way maker. You must believe that he is a healer. You must believe that he is all powerful. You must believe that he is a miracle worker. You must believe he's a God that cannot fail. You must believe that he is. I am that I am. You must believe he is <laughs> the great and mighty God. You must believe. So if you come to God, he's saying you must believe that I am. And that I'm a rewarder of those who are diligently seeking me. Why do you diligently seek God? Because you know he is. He is your source. He is your way maker. He is the one that will provide for you. You know that he is the one that will shelter you. You know that he is that will have the solution for what you need. He said, if you come to God, you must believe that he is.